Hi there. So in this video, we are going to step by step by step, along with a mock question, explain to you how mock writing has to work in this operational case study exam preparation. So it's not like, you know, you just look at a question, you start writing from anywhere, anyhow, and you expect to get the marks. It doesn't work that way. There is a sample structure. There is a way which if you write in is easier for you and it's better for the examiner as well to give you the marks. So in this video, we are going to use the sample uh, for the uh, for purpose of discussion only. For discussion purposes only, we are going to use the Tracks Europe pre-scene, which is from May 2023 and August 2023. Just as a sample, we are going to use this case study and then we are going to showcase to you how in an actual exam scenario you are supposed to write or approach a question. This is only a sample. When you study with us, you will be studying related to the November 2023, Feb 2024 case study only. This is only for sample, which we have created in advance that we want to share with you on how you, if you write a mock or if you approach a mock question in a systematic way, it can really help you. Let's begin. So when you write any mock questions, please remember that there is a six point rule. Please look at the left hand side of your screen, which says how to write an answer. Can everybody see it? Give me a yes in the chat box, please. Everybody can see it. Very good. So we look at the left hand side of the screen only. The first part says there are six steps. The first step is be professional. Even before you start. Hammer it into your mind, drill it into your mind, whatever word you want to use, you can use, put it into your mind that you are the finance officer at Trax Europe. This will easily come if you have gone through the pre-scene, if you have done the pre-scene quiz, you will already start thinking as a person working at Trax Europe because you have gone through the pre-scene multiple times. So again, everything is skills that you have already done, but just putting it in a formal way. So first, you are the professional. You need to know your company in and out and you need to drill it into your mind that you are the SEMA expert. You have to provide an answer which is easy, simple to understand and informative. All three of these things have been in my instructions for all the quizzes that we have done so far. So it's the same thing that you have to carry over here. Nothing new, nothing extra, nothing out of the blue that you have to do. It is important to ensure that you understand that the skills that we practiced on before are important. And that is why we are making you practice them right now. In terms of focus, in terms of creation of our answer, I'm coming to, but this is the first step. Is everybody clear on this first step? Yes, in the chat box, please. Step number one, all good, clear. Okay, now to step number two. Why are you writing the report? What is the purpose of the report? So now step number two is why are you writing this? What is the purpose? The purpose is that a question has been asked from you. So now second step is to start reading the question from the beginning to the end to understand what exactly they are asking from us. What exactly do they want from us? So second step is whatever the questions, whatever it is, pick it up, start to read it from the very beginning to the very end. So first two steps, the be professional step and 
starting to read the question step is called the planning stage. I tell students that, uh, you know, I, I tell students that you should take at least uh, 10 minutes, 12 minutes in this planning stage. Because it will, you will need that much time. You will need that much, uh, you know, you will just need that much time to go through the entire question, go through the entire detail, go through the entire uh, material of the question. Please do not be in a hurry to start to write. Many students make this mistake where they are in a sim very, very, very uh, hurried mind frame of start because they want to start to write rather than focus on the information that they've given and eventually in the hurry they write something wrong. Why to do that? At least 10 to a maximum of 12 minutes you should be taking in these first two steps in this planning stage. You will need that much time. So let's start reading the question on the right hand side and remember I have to read from the start to the end and I am going to figure out what on earth are they exactly asking from me. Let's start reading. From Ben Shorts, finance manager to finance officer, machinery, transfer and motivation of staff. They've clearly given you the uh, subject line. Okay, I'll continue reading. Remember, when I'm reading the question, I'm always trying to talk to myself. I have 10 minutes. I have 12 minutes. I will always talk to myself and try to explain myself the question in a better way in my own words, as always. So there is a plan underway for the transfer of production equipment and staff from XYZ Tractors, which is a company we have recently acquired. So they're saying you have acquired a new company. I'm talking to myself. You have 10 minutes. They have, you have acquired a new company called XYZ Tractors and there is a transfer of equipment and staff. One of the hydraulic press machines has already been transferred in readiness and some of the staff are already here. Okay, machine transferred and staff is already here. There's two things linked to this. Firstly, I was talking yesterday with Jack Newman about all of our assembly and production staff. Assembly and production is a very important part for Trax Europe because we are a production company. He feels that we pay our staff well, but additionally, he wants them to feel properly valued so that we can retain their skills. Okay, this is what our production director is saying. He has asked me for a briefing note on the importance of rewarding our staff and ways in which we can ensure that the staff feel valued. Secondly, Jack said that at the senior management meeting, they need to make a decision about one of the hydraulic presses which has a remaining working life of one year. So in this thing, there are two parts. First, about assembly and production. Second, about a hydraulic press machine. So we already plan to buy a new hydraulic press for 150,000 in one year's time. They're giving you information. Very good. Whatever information they give me, I take it on because, you know, it's important for me to take on the information that they give. However, in the meantime, we have the following two options. So you have a plan to buy a new press, but you have two options for now. Option A is to transfer the hydraulic press to our site and operate it for a period of one year at an annual running cost of 10,000, depreciation of 20,000. So first option is transfer the hydraulic press and incur some costs. They have given a list of costs to you. It will also cost 4,500 to transfer the hydraulic press and a further 1,000 to install it. What you have to do, what you have to calculate, nothing. This is just information that they're giving. So, okay, take it in. In one year's time, we expect to be able to sell this hydraulic press at a scrap value of $5,000. At that point, we would incur selling costs of 500. This is option number one. 
transfer the hydraulic press to our site. Option B is to sell the hydraulic press now itself. The broken one or the one that we need to replace, sell it now itself for 18,000. Incurring selling costs of 300, it would cost 3,000 to have the hydraulic press uninstalled so that the buyer could pick it up. And we would also lease a hydraulic press for a period of one year of rental for 26,000 because you will have to use it in your production anyways. So sell it now and then lease, which would include the installation and maintenance. In addition, 8,000 to operate the leased hydraulic press for one year. So first option is transfer and use, then scrap it. Second option is sell and lease. And a whole different bunch of costs have been given to us. I'm only on step number two. I've not started to type anything, write anything, nothing like that. I'm only reading the question. And as I'm reading the question, I'm speaking to myself to explain myself the question. I would like you to prepare a briefing note that can be circulated ahead of the senior management meeting, which explains. So now the actual question is coming to the fore. Now the actual question is coming up. You're on step number two. What is the report? What is the purpose of the report? So now the actual purpose is coming up. They say why it is important to reward our assembly and production staff. Please also give suggestions of how we can make assembly and production staff feel valued so that they stay with our business either through non-financial rewards or other measures. One way or the other, how will they stay with my business? This is 50% of your marks. Now, the importance of this 50% is huge, very important, and I'm going to tell you what it means. But this is my first task. This is my second task. Both are 50-50% important because they've given subtask is equal to 50%. This is exactly what the exam question is going to be like. Nothing different, nothing new. So understand now. Now, what is this 50%? This 50% is very important. See, Seema says that every student's exam is first marked out of 100 marks. Your entire exam, four questions are marked out of 100 marks. And then you will say that I get my score out of 150. So what is this? So first, every student's exam is marked out of 100 marks. There are going to be three variants in the exam, which means different, different questions related to Tracks Europe only. Three different exams related to Tracks Europe, obviously. But it's to pro, uh, you know prevent sharing of questions or cheating because I can take the exam today. Somebody else can take the exam on Friday, right? It's possible. So they don't want it to be shared. And that is why there are three variants. You will be randomly assigned a variant when you start your exam. Nobody knows what you're going to get. It will be a random assignment of the variant. Now, let's say all three variants are different. It has different questions, but related to Tracks Europe only. Variants are different. Questions are different. Naturally, the difficulty will be a little bit different. For example, one, one exam can have relevant costing. Other, question, uh, other exam can have variances with more numbers. So it's the same difficulty, but maybe the variance question is a little bit more tricky. So in that way, is it fair to compare both these students because one student had a little easy answer, one student had a little difficult question? Is it fair to compare? No. So what Seema does is, to make it comparable, every single student's exam is first marked out of 100 marks. First, every single student's exam is marked out of 100 marks. And then according to your exam, a weightage is multiplied to your score. 
So whatever score you get out of hundred is multiplied by a weightage, which Sima decides. Nobody knows it. Absolutely arbitrary. Absolutely subjective. Only Sima knows it. Depending upon the difficulty of your exam, if they feel that your exam was a little bit easier, which they've already decided, it will be multiplied by a lower weightage. If your exam was a little bit tricky, it will be multiplied by a higher weightage. But this weightage is something that we don't know. So we should not care about it. The 80 on 150 weighted score that you have to receive, when they say weighted, this is what weighted means. First marked out of 100 and then multiplied depending on the difficulty of your exam. But because we don't know this weight, should we worry about it? In my opinion, it's a big no. Because you don't know it. You, don't, you can't, you know, you can't, you don't know it. You can't affect it. Why should I worry about it? So I always say focus on the 100, which you know. Focus on the 100, which is definite. Focus on the 100, which you know, you know, is that's how it's going to be start. That's how it's going to start. So every student exam is first marked out of 100 marks. Now you have four questions in the exam. If you have four questions in the exam and the total mark is 100 marks, what is the value of each question? Please tell me in the chat box, please. Total 100. There are four questions. Very good. Very simple. 25 marks. So this entire question number one that you're seeing on your screen, entire question, task one, task two, everything combined. Question one is 25 marks. Now from that, they are telling you that this first task is worth 50% of those marks. So what is the value of task number one? Please tell me in the chat box. Everybody, there is no rocket science. Half of 25, 12.5. Very good. Task number one is 50% of the entire value of task one, of question one. Question one is 25. Out of that, task 1 is 50%, so 12.5. Task 2 is also 50%, so 12.5. This is very, very, very important to understand and this you will carry from now till the date of the exam. Every individual question is 25 marks. Inside of it, if the task is 50%, you do 50 upon 100 into 25. If it's 30%, 30 upon 100 into 25. If it's 70%, 70 upon 100 into 25. It doesn't matter. Your calculation remains the same. But this is very important to calculate because Seema says one well-explained point, one well-explained argument, one well-explained suggestion gives you two marks. So if in the first task, it's 12.5 marks, how many points will you have to write to get your 12.5 marks? If one point is two marks to get your 12.5 marks, how much will you have to write roughly six, seven, five, six, seven points? Very good. This is very important to understand. Now, all of this is happening in your first 10 minutes only where you're reading the entire question and figuring out which task is worth how much, where I'm going to write how much. That is why the first 10, 12 minutes are important and they are given to you. This is very, very important to understand if you make a mistake here. In all questions, you will make a mistake because if you don't know how much to write, then you'll just keep writing, writing, writing and it won't be good enough. Are we clear with this? Yes, in the chat box, please. Everybody's clear with this. Crystal clear.
Okay. So your first question, twelve point five marks. Second task, twelve point five marks. I read the entire question. My step number two of answer writing is now completed. Everybody understood step number two as well. Yes, in the chat box, please. Very good. Now to step number three. Step number three is after twelve minutes are completed, because twelve minutes went in reading the question, understanding what the first task is, second task is, understanding where I'm going to write how much, all of that. So third step is actually starting to write. Now you are a robot. Now you keep your head down. And you type, 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 and finish the answer. The remaining 32, 33 minutes that you have, you will only have to type. Because only then you will be able to write 5, 6 points for task 1, 5, 6 points for task 2. Otherwise, it's not possible. You have invested time to understand the question. So now, quickly, we start writing. First thing we start with is the title. Subject line or title or heading, whatever you want to call it. It gives you absolutely zero marks, but it can take, it takes only five to 10 seconds. So it's good practice to start with it. What will be the title or the heading here? According to me, it's let's say assembly worker evaluation, or let, let me make it more apt. Let me look at the task. I will say importance of assembly workers. And selection of option A or B. Simple. Took me 5 seconds, 10 seconds, but it entirely summed up what my answer is going to be about. This is step number 3. Are we clear with this? Yes, in the chat box, please. Only 10 seconds. No wasting time on it. So not going to give you any marks, but it's a good start to your answer. You can write whatever you want, but has to be related to the question, obviously. Okay. Next now, step number four. Step number four is the introduction. Now, again, the introduction is going to give you absolutely zero marks. So should I spend a whole lot of time on it? No, only one line, only two lines, more than enough. Because the introduction is where you tell them what your answer is going to include. So over here, I will be speaking about the importance of rewarding our assembly staff. Further, I will speak about which costs to include in each option if chosen. Simple. So over here, the examiner knows that, okay, this student is going to give me exactly what the task wants. Exactly what the question has asked. It's a good start to your answer. Now, my suggestion is that you write it at the beginning. It will take maybe one minute, but it's good practice. Some students choose to forget it altogether and move to step number five, which is also okay. At the end, if you have time, come back and in one minute, do the introduction because it's not going to give you any marks. Clear with step number four? I will call step number four optional, but it's good if you follow it. Okay, everybody? Yes? Okay, great. Now to step number five. All your remaining, let's say you had 33 minutes from that one minute went in your title and in your introduction. All your remaining 32 minutes you have to completely dedicate to the body. The body is where the marks are. The body is where you answer the task. 
and how do you answer the task by giving simple subheadings so what was the first task importance to reward our assembly staff why it is important to reward our assembly staff please also give suggestions of how we can make our staff feel valued this is 50% of your mark so your first subheading becomes why it is important to reward our staff and they had also asked you one more thing also explain how we would make our staff feel valued so how we would make our staff feel valued now remember total you have to write six five six points for task one so first let's start writing why it is important to reward our staff for example my first point is it is important to reward our staff because at trax europe our production process is very labor intensive so if we don't reward our staff they will not be highly motivated which may cause a problem for us in quality correct so let's say i wrote my point here i'm not going to solve this answer with you because first you are going to solve it then we will check it then we i will give you the answer and solve it with you and all of that will happen right now i'm just explaining the structure to you so let's say i wrote the first point same way i wrote the second point same way i wrote the third point why it is important to reward our staff okay fine then i will have to move to how we would make our staff feel valued so we can make our staff feel valued by organizing team picnics for example you know this will help keep morale high and staff happy slash further bought into the business see how i wrote my point it's not just you know keep staff morale high full stop full zero will be given you write the point but you explain it in trax your perspective one well explained point two three four lines of explanation relating it to trax your making it relevant to the question makes it a well explained point and then you get two marks otherwise you don't get anything so you wrote three points for why it is important to reward staff now again you will have to write two three points for how to make our staff feel valued and this is task number 1 complete understanding everybody getting the writing pattern you are giving simple subheadings give me a yes in the chat box you are giving simple subheadings to clearly show them that okay this was the task this is what i am writing and under the task if you want to for example you know see five six points doesn't mean that you number 1 2 3 4 5 6 it's a figure for you to you know uh, understand that okay i have to write this much i will have to write this much to get my marks i will have to write this much to get my credits getting me everybody now if you want to first write the point for example over here i wrote you know team picnics and then explain it you can do that as well if you don't want to write this and simply explain it like this you can do that as well just think of yourself at work if you are at work and somebody asks you how we would make our staff feel valued they don't care if you first write team picnics and then explain it in the email you for you write one and then explain it you write point number 1 and then explain it they want an answer you give it to them however they want so pre presentation becomes secondary the important thing is relation to the question so how do i start my body by putting down the subheadings 
and under each subheading then you answer it according to whatever you have to write everybody's clear yes in the chat box please if you have a question put it down please this is exactly like the exam every single question that we do is exactly like the exam so everything that you're doing you over here has a high chance of coming up in the exam as well thank you this is only task number 1 only half the job done after task 1 is complete you move to task 2 selection again so simple subheading you know your heading title you don't have to do all of that again it's the same question so selection of option 1 or option 2 start option 1 whatever you want to write blah 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 option 2 blah 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 that's how you complete your answer trust me this is a very simple question that is why we have given it to you as a first question but it will be important for you to understand how to write how to present question is will bullet points with summaries look non professional at the end of the day as long as you answer the question never has seema pointed out or never has seema not passed a student for writing bullet points or numbering their points as long as it's correct nobody cares in my opinion write it this way where i have showed you know small paragraphs keeping it uh, simple keeping it related after the first paragraph or after the first point leave a space then start with your second point leave a space then start with your second point third point that's my suggestion you want to go with whatever way you write answer has to be related to the question it's as simple as that are we all clear yes in the chat box please everybody okay then to step number 6 which is the conclusion which is one line if you have any other questions please let me know thank you finance officer job complete all the time all the effort is given to the body only because the body is where the marks are thank you for taking a look at this video i hope you found it helpful so don't try to write any of these answers that uh, you know any of the questions that you are seeing on your screen or any of the discussions that we are making because we are going to give you a very very specific mock exam related to the november and february case study you don't have to write this this is only for sample like i showed told you at the very beginning it's only for sample purposes it's something that you will benefit from just for understanding but for actual practice we will give you everything that's relevant to the november and feb exam and at the end of this mini course as well you have a sample mock that you will be able to take and it's very much related to the november and feb case study so don't worry about that and i hope you found this video helpful